Ryzen 3. Ryzen 3 is AMD's entry-level CPU that's built for simple, everyday tasks. It has four cores and eight threads, which makes it good enough for doing multiple light tasks such as browsing the web, watching videos, or using office applications. But while Ryzen 3 can handle multitasking to a degree, it is not built for heavy workloads like AAA gaming, professional editing, or 3D rendering. And even if you manage to run the heavy software to some extent, it's still going to be lagging or having a slow loading time. But of course, this is exactly why Ryzen 3 is cheap and becomes a good choice for a budget computer. Oh yeah, other than the tier of the processor itself, another important thing is the suffix or letters at the end, because those suffixes actually indicate the power or features that CPU has. There are many, but in laptops, Ryzen 3 processors often end with the U suffix. This means the CPU will prioritize limiting its power so that the laptop generates less heat and has longer battery life, which is useful for office workers or students since they need a device that can last through an entire day without having to keep recharging the laptop. On the desktop side, some Ryzen 3 models carry the G suffix, which means they include integrated Radeon graphics inside the chip. This is especially useful for budget PC builds because it allows the computer to run without a dedicated graphics card. But of course, if you want to use the PC for AAA gaming or other heavy software, this type of processor is still not powerful enough to handle the work, so you still need a dedicated graphics card. Ryzen 5 Ryzen 5 is AMD's mid-range processor and is considered as one of the most used and popular Ryzen CPUs. This is because it's stronger than Ryzen 3 but still cheaper than Ryzen 7. In terms of performance, Ryzen 5 has 6 cores and 12 threads, which allows it to handle more demanding tasks such as gaming, photo and video editing, or programming. So compared to Ryzen 3, Ryzen 5 can definitely handle more multitasking work without lagging and has a faster loading time. In laptops, Ryzen 5 also has the U version like Ryzen 3, but now it also comes with the H suffix. This H suffix means that this is aimed at performance laptops or gaming laptops because it offers higher power limits for better speed, but it uses more energy. On the desktop side, other than the G suffix, Ryzen 5 processors also come with the X suffix. This version is tuned for higher clock speeds and better overall performance compared to the non-X models, which makes it an alternative if you want a little bit of an upgrade with a Ryzen 5 without having to purchase a more expensive CPU like Ryzen 7. Ryzen 7 Ryzen 7 is a high-performance processor for people like content creators or streamers who need more power than the mid-range processor. So if Ryzen 5 can handle heavy gaming, Ryzen 7 lets you play the heavy game while doing a live streaming, keeping Discord open, and stuff like that. And this is possible because it has 8 cores and 16 threads. In laptops, Ryzen 7 has other variants of the H suffix, and those are HS and HX. The HS means the CPU is built for thin and light laptops, but still delivers high performance while being power efficient. Basically, it's like the better version of Ryzen with the U suffix. And the HX one means the processor is unlocked for maximum performance by consuming more power to reach higher speeds. This Ryzen suffix is usually found in the bigger gaming laptops because they need bigger cooling systems to handle the extra heat from those higher CPU clock speeds. On desktops, Ryzen 7 processors also have an upgraded version of the X models that's called the X3D. These use AMD's 3 dv cache technology to stack extra cache on the chip. Or in simple terms, it means you can get better gaming performance without consuming more wattage. Ryzen 9 Ryzen 9 is AMD's top-tier processor that's designed for enthusiasts who require very high levels of performance. It has 12 or sometimes 16 cores, which makes it capable of handling extremely demanding workloads such as 4K and 8K video editing, scientific simulations, and reaching a really high FPS in competitive gaming. In terms of suffix, Ryzen 9 works just like Ryzen 7, so the main difference is that Ryzen 9 is just more powerful. But when I say powerful, it's not only compared to Ryzen 7, but even compared to Intel as well. Because if we compare the top-tier processors like the Ryzen 9 X3D against Intel's Core Ultra 9 series, benchmarks have shown that Ryzen often delivers better performance and higher FPS in many AAA games. But despite all that power, most people still stick with Ryzen 3, 5, or 7. Because only tech enthusiasts or professionals really need a CPU this powerful. Oh yeah, and this is also where AMD released a special variant called Ryzen AI. Ryzen AI. 
Ryzen AI is a variant of the Ryzen CPU that can be seen in some premium laptops like the MSI Stealth, Asus ROG, or Lenovo Legion. What makes this Ryzen CPU special is because inside the processor, it has something called NPU, or Neural Processing Unit. So this NPU technology is useful to handle tasks that are related to artificial intelligence. Meaning, instead of making the CPU process everything, the NPU takes over those AI-specific workloads so that the task doesn't burden your CPU, which makes your laptop cooler and doesn't consume too much power. In practice, it is used when you open Microsoft Copilot in Windows 11, like when you summarize documents or generate text. Also, it speeds up creative tools like AI generative fill in Photoshop and smart upscaling in video editors. Even this is also used for Windows Studio effects, which can blur or replace your background in video calls, cancel out background noise, and many more. But again, most people don't really need this Ryzen AI feature because it's more suitable for professionals like developers or remote workers who need to do a lot of multitasking while doing a video call with a client. Ryzen Pro. Ryzen Pro processors are business-focused versions of the regular Ryzen CPU, meaning you can find Ryzen Pro models of Ryzen 3, 5, 7, or 9, and it is sometimes combined with Ryzen AI. In terms of raw performance, Ryzen Pro is actually just like the regular Ryzen CPUs, but the difference is Ryzen Pro has something called AMD Memory Guard and Remote Management. So this Memory Guard feature can encrypt your login credentials, encryption keys, and other text-based files that are stored in the memory. So just in case someone wants to gain access or steal your data, the data they get will be scrambled and unreadable. And the remote management feature means the IT team can configure the settings, update, or even lock a computer from a distance. This is so useful because a company has a lot of computers, so they don't need to manage the computers one by one. Ryzen Z. Ryzen Z is a special type of AMD processor designed specifically for handheld gaming devices. The most well-known ones are the Ryzen Z1 and Z2 alongside their extreme versions, which can deliver more power, but of course, they are definitely still weaker than laptop or desktop processors. Also, since the size of a handheld is too small for a dedicated graphics card, Ryzen Z always comes with an integrated GPU that's weaker than a graphics card. But despite all of that, it's still very well optimized, so handheld devices can still play games at a decent FPS while balancing the battery consumption. Threadripper. Ryzen Threadripper is AMD's CPU that is built for workloads that go far beyond what even a Ryzen 9 can handle. While Ryzen 9 is already powerful enough, Threadripper is way more powerful because it's used to handle heavy-duty tasks, like engineering companies running advanced simulations, or big studios such as Pixar managing millions of calculations in complex 3D scenes. And all of this is possible because Threadripper has an insane number of cores, ranging from 24 cores to 96 cores. Even the size itself is physically larger than a normal CPU. That's why it requires a special socket with a larger motherboard. And since it's extremely powerful, it is also very expensive, like thousands of dollars just for that one chip. So yeah, if you're thinking of using this processor for daily use, not only it's an overkill, but it's just way too expensive for casual users. Oh, by the way, I made some other cool videos too, so don't forget to watch it later, okay?